Kia ora, good evening. Auckland police have just released new information about how a dairy shop worker was killed in Sandringham last night. They say the offender left the store with the cash register drawer and put it in a wheelie bin 100 metres away. At this stage, the dairy worker approached him and during an altercation, the victim was stabbed several times. The victim then made his way back to the dairy and called emergency services, but later died. Police are still searching for the killer who has left a family distraught a community in shock. And as Yannicka Tarellan reports, business leaders are accusing the government of having blood on their hands. An outpouring of love, grief and anger. The Sandringham community gathered outside the Rose Cottage Superette this morning to show their love for the young man killed here last night. For the young guy. It's uh, just so unfair. I'm just so, so very angry. I think it's a really sad indictment on our society that we've reached this. The man killed was from the Indian Gujarati community. Friends describe him as sweet and kind, and he'd not long been married. They were planning to buy a house and have kids. <laughs> but no, she's got no husband. Friends say the 34-year-old had only been working in the shop since last Thursday and had been living in New Zealand for less than a year. He and his new wife had agreed to look after this dairy temporarily for three months while the owners were away in India. And the newlyweds were excited about seeing what it was like to own a business, something that they had hoped to do themselves one day. A couple who formerly owned this dairy says it has a long history of violence and they sold up after they had a gun pointed at them. Tools were uh, taken, uh, broken windows obviously. Last one was the um, loaded shotgun. We got out. Police say the man they're hunting this time was wearing dark clothes, a dark cap and his pants had a white stripe. They're asking the public for CCTV vision from the area around 8pm last night. It was possible that this man was walking around in that area before and afterwards. But the Dairy and Business Association says it's the government's fault. They have blood on their hands and they're responsible for it. It believes consequences for violent crime are too lenient. It also says the government's not making sure promised safety equipment is actually being installed in shops. Funding for fog cannons was announced back in 2017. Smoke bombs that mean criminals can't see where they're going. This store has made three separate applications for a fog cannon but has been turned down three times after police came to assess the shop. Stairs inside seem to have disqualified it as a ram raid risk. They seem to think that unless it can be ram raided, it doesn't deserve a fog cannon. He's not in a in an uh, you know a shopping centre. His entry isn't at ground level, so um, you know he's not considered to be at risk. Whether a fog cannon would have saved this young life cannot be known, but it's a killing many now believe was preventable. OK, Janneke, what's the latest information you've got from the police? Police have revealed this evening that the offender actually made it out of the store and 100 metres down the road toward Duncan Avenue. And he was then caught on CCTV dumping the till he'd stolen in a neighbour's wheelie bin. It's at this point that the victim approached him, there was an altercation and the victim was stabbed several times. He did make it all the way back to the shop where he received first aid, but he later died in hospital. OK, Janneke, and you've been talking to people who turned up at the crime scene today. What have they been telling you? There was a really sad sense of inevitability about this. People have seen the reports of escalating ram raids and robberies. They've heard the warnings from dairy owners that someone could die. Someone has. And many people said this really feels like a turning point now. People are more determined than ever to find solutions. Yana Katarellan, live for us in Sandringham. Thanks very much.